What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back here again with another video. So, we're going to check out how good was the Yes Movement from 2013 through 2014. Yes Movement, easily one of the most organic movements that has ever happened in wrestling. When you think of the Yes Movement, you obviously got to think of the What Chance that Stone Cold created back in the Attitude Era. It's, it's one of those things where it transcended just wrestling. And when the Yes Movement really came into like its own stride, it it started it started to remind me and many others of the What Movement, the What the What Chance and what Stone Cold created. People were saying it outside of wrestling. The same here. This is what got Daniel Bryan over. And we all know WWE did not plan for Daniel Bryan to get that over. And when he got that over, it was it was great because we wanted him. The fans wanted him. It wasn't even just the hardcore fans. It was the casual fans, too. They wanted him to be the guy. WWE did not want Daniel Bryan to be the guy. And he ended up being the guy. How many shows during this this movement were taken over by the yes chance how many promos was ruined because of the yes chance it, it was it was just a an organic moment and i was glad i was able to witness it when it happened man one of the better times in wwe for sure so we're gonna check this out man appreciate all love and support road to 60k and let's do this different show than what we know it as today this was a time where nxt was an elimination game show mm -hmm. got hit at metro by t-mobile we don't think god damn instant ads Introducing gotta the love them gotta love them paired up with a wwe pro and that pro would coach them through challenges and help determine the fate of the other competitors mm -hmm. in amongst these hopefuls was daniel bryan yep. bryan was well respected on the indie scene and a fan favorite the hardcores knew who this guy was they knew about his amazing in-ring ability and they were pulling for the guy to win it all unfortunately he'd be eliminated and for a lot of people their hopes of seeing the american dragon in wwe were dashed when WWE ran their Nexus angle, yeah. Brian was brought back, but he was legitimately fired after strangling Justin Roberts with yep. a tie. We all thought this was it for him. He had squandered two chances at the WWE, and he wouldn't be back, or if he was, it would be a long road back. Yep. Thankfully for him, WWE saw the error in their ways and brought him back. From here, he'd climb the ranks. First, he'd win the United mm -hmm. States title, beating his former NXT pro, The Miz. Then he'd achieve success in different aspects of WWE, everything from money in the bank and even an 18 second loss. Yeah. But what was the time that defined this indie darling? In 2011, Daniel Bryan won the Money in the Bank briefcase. This came at the legendary Money in the Bank 2011 pay per view. Mm. And it looked like everything. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was that same pay-per-view. The infamous 2011 Money in the Bank pay-per-view. That makes sense. He did win it there. That was, man, if you haven't seen Money in the Bank 2011, definitely go check it out. It, it's an enjoyable card through top to bottom. For the most part, it's, very, it's a very enjoyable show. Everything was set. WWE had their money on Brian, and he was their guy. But as loved as he was... He lacked one thing critical to every WWE superstar, a character. Sure, he would make out with the divas, but was that enough? Brian, when he won the Money in the Bank, said he'd cash in at WrestleMania the following year. But he'd instead end up cashing it in at TLC that year. Mm -hmm. And now Daniel Bryan was the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. He'd have some successful title defenses, but when Royal Rumble winner Sheamus decided to choose him as his WrestleMania opponent, it was a kiss. This single-handedly, I think, jump-started the Yes movement. The way he lost in under 20 seconds at this WrestleMania, it was, he was technically, I believe, a heel at this time, but the booking of this was so atrocious and people were actually doing the yes chance because I think at this time he was doing, I want to say no chance. And I think the crowd was, you know, to, and you know, 
to be like i guess you can say his opposite to kind of annoy him in character sense they would chant yes so you or no i take that back no he was chanting yes but he was still a heel at the time so the people started getting onto that wave and then when he got squashed and he pretty much got squashed here i think the movement started to really start really going because people wanted to see him actually do well even though technically he was a heel at this point people still wanted to see him do well i could be a little bit off on this but i believe that's kind of what started it in my opinion i think that's kind of got the wheels in motion and 18 seconds that would finish off his first title run from there he found himself in a love story with punk and aj and yeah then- he was doing i remember the yes chance weren't like he was still technically healed he was doing the yes chance to annoy people and then it started really becoming more of a, a positive movement and later on the formation of team hell no kane and daniel bryan two polar opposites yep these guys just couldn't get along and it was everything sports entertainment should be the two would attend anger management mm-hmm. and consistently bickered but slowly they started to appreciate one another and found themselves as tag team champions the shield would put an end to that title reign mm-hmm. but man were these guys ever entertaining team hell no they were organically loved by the wwe universe everything they yep. did their comedic flair their somehow brilliant chemistry it was all amazing. <laughs> when these two lost the titles brian went out of his way to prove that he wasn't the weak link of the group he delivered a more vicious side to his character it was at this time where people fell in love with Daniel Bryan even more. Mm-hmm. His organic connection to the WWE fans was unrivaled. His in-ring skills, much the same. He was universally loved. It's this admiration which led John Cena to choose Daniel Bryan as his SummerSlam opponent. The story here was the top dog in the company yep. against the underdog. Yep. It was that simple. Was Bryan ready to be WWE champion? Well, the McMahons didn't really think so. No. Nope. They started to poke fun at his appearance and stature, saying that... And this is... Here's what I want y'all to understand if you don't know. A lot of the stuff that they come up with in these promos, especially if it's coming from Vince and upper management, that's how they really feel. They just cover it up as a promo, but that's how they felt. They did not think daniel bryan was a a plus player they always considered him as b plus the best the fans we considered him an a plus player because we knew that he was and that's what made this whole daniel bryan versus authority segment one of the greater like greater like segments we've ever had like greater programs it reminds me of the stone cold going against the vince mcmahon uh authority figure back in the attitude era Granted, Daniel Bryan wasn't, you know, as, you know, rugged and and hardcore like Stone Cold character was. But he had heart. He had fire. He had passion like Stone Cold. And basically, this is this is literally what this was. The underdog going against the authority figure. Stone Cold, even though technically you could say he wasn't really the underdog. He just wasn't the typical champion for for the for um the mainstream wrestling fans of what vince mcmahon wanted so i like the comparisons here and as you can see there had been no one as over as stone cold since daniel bryan name me someone that was that over universally with the 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 hardcore fans and the, the casual fans no one had been that over outside of CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, since Stone Cold, this, the Attitude Era. Like, it was, it was cool to see. He would always come up short. This was because of his height and how he wasn't a prototypical wrestling star. They simply said Bryan was a B-plus player mm-hmm. and a face like his would never be the face of WWE. They tried to get him to cut his hair and shave his beard, but it wouldn't go anywhere. This only helped get fans more behind him. Mm-hmm. The whole aesthetic of Daniel Bryan just worked so well. He was a guy like me and you. Yep. He fought for his dreams, and he didn't take no for an option. Now, it was SummerSlam time. And that's what worked with Stone Cold's character. People could relate back to him. Stone Cold, he's like a guy like you and me. He works hard. 
You know, he likes to drink his beer, but you know what I'm saying? He may not look like a traditional champion, but he felt like he deserved it. He put in the work. He wasn't going to quit. He didn't take shit from no one. This is somebody you wanted to be with your bosses, but you couldn't because you would get fired. You wanted to flip off your bosses. Then the same here. Daniel Bryan looks like me and you. Works hard. He's not no jacked up wrestler, but guess what? He gonna go out there and give it his all, and it, it works. When you when you can like connect with people on that level, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit, man. In the main event of the show was the Ultimate Underdog against the Fantastic WWE match too. Top Dog, Daniel Bryan and John Cena. Fantastic Special match. Referee though was Triple H. After an amazing back and forth match, so many close falls, the Underdog finally, finally toppled the yep. face of the company. And now he was the face of the company until pedigree cash in. That's all she wrote mm -hmm. the same night. Daniel Bryan had become the WWE champion. It was all taken away from him. Triple H turned his back on him. And now the face of WWE was Randy Orton. The authority had it out for Daniel Bryan. He just didn't fit the mold. He couldn't carry the company. So Triple H, Vince McMahon, and Stephanie would do everything in their power mm -hmm. to keep him away from the WWE Championship. They'd attack Daniel Bryan mercilessly, and he just couldn't do anything about it. The rules were, if anyone disobeyed Triple H, there would be repercussions. Now it was time for Night of Champions. Such a good build-up. Bryan had build earned up. himself another chance at the WWE Championship, and he earned himself another win. But he was stripped of the title after a fast count. The authority thought that Brian was working with referee Scott Armstrong. I remember so they that. fired him for violating policy. Now the title was vacated, and it would be another match between Orton and Brian. This time, man, inside and this was a good. I'm not even gonna lie to you. This was such a good build up, bro. Because you were getting, I was legitimately getting invested in this because of the bullshit they were putting Daniel Bryan through. It was so good. Great storytelling. Oh, man. Hell Love cell. it. And to prevent from any referee shenanigans, Shawn Michaels would be the special guest referee. This was the only one Triple H could trust, was his best friend. He knew he would do what was best for business. During the match, Michaels got heated after Brian attacked Triple H. And mm -hmm. you don't mess with Michaels, boy. So sweet shit music. Yep. And Randy Orton was the WWE champion once again. From here, Brian left the WWE title scene. Fans yep. were enjoying his me versus the establishment story. They put it on the back burner though. He'd feud with the Wyatt family where Bray Wyatt tried to brainwash him into joining the Wyatt family. And Brian had had enough. He was tired of everyone screwing him over. He was tired of fighting everyone and coming up short. He knew whatever he did, he just wouldn't win. So he joined the Wyatt family. He was now a follower of Bray Wyatt's group. But it didn't last very long. Mm -hmm. After a steel cage match, Wyatt was about to sacrifice Brian. He was the reason they lost. In Wyatt's eyes, it was all Brian's fault, so he had to pay the price. It was this moment where Daniel Bryan said, Screw following the buzzards, yeah. you're gonna follow me. He beat down the Wyatts and led one of the greatest yes chants in the history of yep. history. This visual was simply stunning. Yep. From here, it was Brian Look versus that. Wyatt at the upcoming Royal Rumble. One of, if not one of the best matches that year. That year, Daniel Bryan versus Bray Wyatt, fantastic. Fantastic. And I'm okay with, at the time, Bray Wyatt winning. Because we all thought Daniel Bryan was going to be in the Royal Rumble. So it didn't really matter. I think that would have been the most epic story. But... They had other plans. And when I say this match was amazing, fantastic this match, match was amazing. Fantastic but match. But Brian fell short once again. Mm -hmm. And later in the night, it was time for the Royal Rumble match where we wouldn't see Brian. That's all the crowd wanted was Daniel yep, Bryan. Yep, that's all the they cared for. The kids wanted him out in the ring. The moms wanted him out in the ring. Dogs wanted him out in the ring. He was all WWE fans wanted to see was the underdog. After he wasn't in the Royal Rumble, fans would continue to make their voice heard. Ooh. They booed Batista out of the building when he booed won the 2015 him. Royal Rumble. Booed him. All for the simple fact they wanted, wanted Daniel, Daniel Bryan. Bryan. Yep. But it was literal. The authority wanted a dude like this nowhere near the main event. But one week, they said they'd entertain Bryan being the face of WWE. All he had to do was beat WWE World Champion Randy Orton. But of course, it would all be for naught. 
Thankfully, Brian qualified for the Elimination Chamber where he'd have another shot at the title, but he was attacked by Kane and it was another opportunity where Brian would be screwed over. The same guy he won tag team gold with a few years ago was the guy screwing him mm -hmm. out of his dream. It was from here, Brian had to take matters into his own hands. He had to fight for the people. Dare I say, he was the voice of the voiceless. WWE fans were rejecting Batista and Randy Orton as the main event oh, match yeah. at WrestleMania. No one wanted that. No one. <laughs> no one. If you said you wanted that match, bro, I would have to look at you very strange. Like, like what are you talking about? No one wanted to see this. No one wanted to see Evolution Boys go at it. No. No. If Daniel Bryan wasn't going to be in the main event, none of this mattered. Yeah. Because their man was Daniel Bryan. His popularity was at a fever pitch. Yeah. So Bryan confronted the authority. He said clearly the authority had it in for him. Now all he wanted was Triple H at WrestleMania. He had screwed him over for nearly a year and he needed to take out what was causing all of this. On the March 3rd, 2014 episode of Raw, Daniel Bryan stood in the middle of the ring and told the Chicago crowd they had a voice and they would hijack Raw. Mm -hmm. Daniel Bryan would not leave the ring until one of two things happened. Either Triple H accepted his challenge or Batista came out to fight him. Triple H came out and the answer was still no. But when Daniel Bryan fought Batista in the main event, he'd hold his own against everyone until the authority would once mm -hmm. again get the better of him. The next week, as long as Daniel Bryan apologized to the authority, he wouldn't be fired for his actions. But Daniel Bryan would not quit. He Such would a not good quit. He would build up, bro. Occupy Raw. Yep. Daniel Bryan and hundreds of his fans dressed in his shirts. That was pretty cool, ring, bro. That was a cool visual. Hostage until they got what they wanted. Triple H versus Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania. That 30. was, bro. This was just. You can't. I know this is all planned and stuff, but this is organic overness. It's not even a real word. This is how you organically get over, bro. Like, I don't... What else is there to say? I watched... I'm telling you, from this span period of the Yes Movement beginning, I was watching Raw heavily because I was interested in the Daniel Bryan storyline. Really interested. Because at this point, I think CM Punk was having some issues with management, and I think CM Punk had left, I want to say, because he didn't want to face Triple H. Uh, I, I think that's what it was. Originally, it was going to be him facing Triple H, but he didn't want to face him. I think that's what the reason was. But basically, because CM Punk didn't want to show up, like he was done with the direction of how things were going to be booked, this is why we got what we got. Because technically... This match, Daniel Bryan wasn't supposed to be in this spot. But because CM Punk left, he ended up being in this spot. So it was kind of a double-edged sword. We lost CM Punk, but we gained this. So A wild sight. That's all I can say. Daniel Bryan, no matter what anyone said, just wouldn't leave the ring. He had hijacked the show. And despite their best efforts, they couldn't clear the ring. So they had to give in. And the result was... It was Daniel Bryan versus Triple H at WrestleMania 30. If Bryan won, he would be added into the title match at WrestleMania 30. Everything between Triple H and Daniel Bryan was just so well executed. It was the highlight of the show and yep. proved how amazing both men were at their jobs. This was great. Triple H would get Bryan handcuffed and mm -hmm. just mercilessly beat him down. It did a great job at cementing Daniel Bryan as the underdog mm -hmm. that you couldn't help but cheer for. And also Triple H as a horrible villain. Yeah, this the is so good. The visuals going to WrestleMania were a different level. Yeah. The segments were great. Now we were a few days away from WrestleMania 30. Daniel Bryan would end the go-home Raw on top of the Ooh. world. But the question was, so good. would he end WrestleMania 30 on the top of the... The way they set it up, they had to. Because you have him going against Triple H at the beginning of the, I think they were going to have him like, or they had to set up where he was going to face Triple H prop at the beginning of the show. And then later on, if he wins, he was going to be added to the match. It wouldn't make sense for him to lose that match because it would kill all the momentum. The show would be ruined because no one would care about anything else on the show because Daniel Bryan lost. He's not going to be in the main event. 
So you kind of knew how they were going to set it up. You kind of had a feeling it was going to go this way, but you was just enjoying the ride, bro. And it made it just made for an epic moment at WrestleMania 30. WWE Mountain. And it was a great match. Great when we started match. Carvana, they told us that selling cars... That match, that first match at WrestleMania 30, it definitely got things going, bro. That was the perfect match it's the to be having at the beginning of the show. WrestleMania. Brock is fighting Taker. Cena's fighting Wyatt. The Rock, Stone Cold, and Hulk all appeared. But there was one question. Could Daniel Bryan do yep. the unthinkable? Could he be one of the greatest in the industry? And if he won that match, could he be two more of the greatest in the industry? In the first match of the show, it was Daniel Bryan versus Triple H. Winner advances to the main event of the show. This match was back and forth with mm -hmm. the crowd roaring and biting at every move. The tension was high and so were the stakes. And it would be a running knee that helped yep. Daniel Bryan topple the game and advance to the main event of the show. The yes movement was at a fever pitch. Everyone was going wild. Mm -hmm. Now it was the main event of the show. An injured Daniel Bryan versus two of the all-time greats, Randy Orton and Batista. Could Daniel Bryan reach the mountaintop? After months of mental anguish, torture, and being screwed at every turn, could he finally do it? Bryan fought his way valiantly. He would come so close before yep. Triple H <laughs> pulled the ref out of the ring and God damn you, Triple H. Scott Armstrong. The same ref, which was fired a few months back, had returned and now he was working for the authority. But that wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. Then Randy and Batista would work together to eliminate the pest, the guy that they just couldn't get rid of. Bro, shout out to Randy Orton. Hitting an RKO from a Batista bomb and landing flesh. I mean, not flesh, flush on the TV monitor. Look, he, he landed straight on the TV monitor. All his weight back. Landed straight on the TV monitor, bro. Oh, my God. Brutal. I think that hurt him more than Daniel Bryan. Looked like they had finally done that. It was a Batista bomb into an RKO on the announce table. Daniel Bryan was getting carted out of the arena, and his hopes of winning the title were over. Then he gets off the stretch. They were building this up, bro. One final flurry. As the crowd is roaring, Nita Batista, yep. Yes Lock, and the culmination of everything had come true. One of the best commentary by Michael Cole ever. Batista tap out. Batista tap out. Bro, I, uh, I'm i getting goosebumps because I remember watching this live. I remember watching this live and losing my shit because they did it. He won. They listened to the fans. He got the victory. Oh, my God, bro. Daniel Bryan was the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Everything thrown in his way was overcame. Yep. Everyone who was a thorn in his side, he beat in this match. The crowd was going wild. WrestleMania simply turned into Yeslemania, mm -hmm. and the Yes movement was complete. This feud solidified Daniel Bryan as a top-tier star. Facts. There was an organic magic that he encapsulated, mm -hmm. and what that is, it's still kind of hard to figure out. Daniel Bryan's run to the WWE's mountaintop was simply magical. Even though he got injured, yep. it was well done. It was long-term storytelling. Whether it was intentional or not, who knows? But this is one of the best underdog stories ever mm -hmm. told, and everything blended together so well. Everything from him losing in 18 seconds to the mm -hmm. screw job and him overcoming everyone in his path. When Organic. talk about the Yes movement, it's in two different lights. Some people say that Daniel Bryan became a star during this time and without this, it would have been harder for guys like AJ Styles to achieve success as quick as he did. People say that Bryan transcended the business for guys his size mm -hmm. and it became okay to look the way he did. Others will say it was a time that didn't do anyone any favors. People say this is where fans started to get their way a little bit too much. That topic is up for conversation. I don't know about that I'll one. That up to you. As far as the Yes movement goes, it was just fun to watch the product. It was a storyline that got you hooked in, and it was simply magical. One of the greatest storylines in WWE history. The Yes movement is synonymous with one of the best endings 
overall endings to a story. You couldn't have ended it more perfectly than Daniel Bryan winning. Now, originally, I think they had Daniel Bryan holding the straps, holding the belts until SummerSlam, and that's when he was going to uh, drop it to Brock Lesnar. That's originally that was what 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 was supposed to happen. He was going to drop the belts to Brock Lesnar because obviously Brock Lesnar beat the Undertaker streak, so he's going to drop the belts. But that never happened because he ended up getting injured, so he couldn't wrestle stuff like that. But man, I we for those who don't know, a lot of things happened for this movement to happen. CM Punk leaving is one of the reasons why this actually took place and the fact that the fans we made a difference i would like to think that we forced their hand because if that show did not end with daniel bryan winning they would have shat they would have destroyed that main event they would have destroyed monday night raw you wouldn't have hurt bro. people would have been upset and this is one of the few times where I can say the booking here was it was good. I don't think it was all the way intentional. I don't think they wanted Daniel Bryan to be this over, but the booking here was perfect. They slow built the booking with Daniel Bryan to the point to where he got and it worked beautifully. So comment down below. Let me know. Do you guys feel like the yes movement well i i don't even know i can ask that because I, I'm, I'm i'm be honest with you the yes movement it it i feel like this is a redundant question it is one of the greater things that's ever happened that's ever been produced by wwe there's no denying that man just comment down below let me know man if you guys miss daniel bryan in wwe because i do I, I i do miss him i i, I wish you know he was still in WWE, but, you know, reports are saying he's in AEW, so maybe they, they do something in AEW. But I'm willing to bet they see Daniel Bryan in AEW. The Yes Movement will never die. They will be chanting Yes as soon as they see him. So comment down below. Let me know if you guys miss Daniel Bryan in WWE. But I appreciate all the love and support. Roll260K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.